this is uh, John O. Coulter from Vanderkitten, joining us from Northern California on Cycling Illustrated, and my name's Brandon. And John O., you've been in the pro um, and international circuit for many years. You've raced with Bissell, Fly V, Australia, and now you're... I was the, on those teams, but yeah. Okay. Well, now you're the director of uh, Vanderkitten. It's one of the best women's cycling teams in the country. How did you make that transition from men's to women? Uh, women's cycling has been something that I've been involved in uh, since probably the early, you know, early 2000s. Um, you know, when I was racing, uh, when, when I was a racer, um, you'd always, you know, train with the girls and stuff like that. And, you know, oftentimes they'd be, they'd be better than you. You just think, you know, these, these athletes are really good. And as, as you progress with your own cycling and, and see the benefits, and, and non-benefits that, that come your way and then look at the disparity um, that the women's cyclists have to deal with. Like, it, it certainly was something that, something that I could, you know, that I thought was pretty unfair. Um, and as time went on and, you know, I finished cycling and, and got jobs in cycling, you'd go to races and you'd, you'd try and help out, you know, well, from, in my experience, like, I'd try and help out young athletes, um, whether they be from, whether, whether they be male or female, um, from Australia and New Zealand, and and you'd see that doing little things for, for the female athletes would, would go a long way. You know, you, you know, opening a few doors or host housing or stuff like that for, for the females definitely um, enables people that would otherwise not have a chance to actually achieve something. Um, so you know, after a couple of years um, working with Vessel and, and the Australian, like the the idea was. You know, the Australia was going to go to the Pro Tour, and I'd already, you know, made that decision that I didn't want to um, want to be involved in, in, in that. And uh, as it you know, as it turned out, you know, that team folded, which is a which is a very bad thing in cycling. Um, but I'd I'd opted out before that, and and connected with Dave Barecki, who I, you know, has this great vision for for women's athletics in general. Um, he has a brand that that can sort of carry women's cycling. Um, or you know, at least his team at the moment, and hopefully in the future, uh, many aspects of, of women's sport. Um, so connected with him, you know, I'd known him for a few years up in up in NorCal here, and uh, and asked if I could, you know, be included in his team. Jeff Hopkins, another Australian, had been the director previously, um, and you know, I chatted to Dave various times, and he was he was fully on board with it. He was, you know, he was like, yeah, I, I said these are things that we can hopefully achieve, and um, we've made some goals and we set out, and we. Uh, We've gradually grown the team in, in a different direction uh, than it was on previously um, every year, so it's been pretty successful. How many how many women riders are going to be on the team for 2013? We will have uh, it's a secret, but uh, 12, 12 is our roster. Okay. In addition to Vander Kitten, um, do you have some new sponsors coming on board? Can you tell me who they are and about them? I can tell you. I can tell you our returning sponsors first. So. Uh, um, you know, Cast Helmets has been has been on board with what we're doing. They're, they're you know they're they're a great Italian manufacturer. Of helmets. Super cool looking helmets. Yes, yeah, super cool Cast Helmets USA. Um, looks after us. Victoria Shoes is back. Um, so once again, the Italian connection. Um, Smith Optics, and then you know a, a very important part of the package is is Billier coming on board. So you know uh, an over a hundred year old company founded in 1906, um, Billier and they um, you know we we had a good chat to them. Uh, and in a bike, one of our riders, Kate Chilcott, rode the World Championships this uh, in 2012 um, on on one of their bikes, and you know we got talking, and they were pretty excited about our program. They wanted to you know branch into the US for the first time with, um, with some teams, and um, you know we were one of the ones that they decided to go with. They they ended their their pro tour relationship and just looking for fresh starts, and you know we're we're a good little match for that. So. That's Very great. Excited. We're always yeah. thankful for new sponsors. Um, take me well, inside. You're, you, you know, you're a director. We're going to switch the conversation to racing a little bit. Take me inside one of your meetings with these um, fantastic women that look so beautiful in their kits. But take me inside. I mean, what are your rules? Do you have rules like? Let me give you an example. Like, if a brake rolls, there's always two of you in it. Can you give me some of those? Rules tactically that you might tell the girls in a team camp. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, every every race scenario is different, and, and you know, we we do break our season into um, 
you know, uh, criterion races and, and, and stage races. And any uh, race, you know, any race is going to bring up different different opportunities and, and, and different scenarios that we, you know, we're, we're forced to, to race with. Something that we've always tried to do because we are a smaller team without without the bigger names and 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 some of the more powerful riders. We are we are a very opportunistic team. So trying to be aggressive and trying to be in breakaways, um, not necessarily initiating, with something that's you know maybe ground rule for Bandicoot, and you know just being active and, and making a bit of a show is something that we we try and do. Um, there are definitely goal races where we go in with a very specific plan, and 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 you know sometimes they'll. You know, we've been fortunate enough. We would won twelve races this year by good planning and selling out for either the sprinter or, or um, you know, letting letting sort of an under, unknown rider get away, sort of thing, and, and, and referring to the finish. Not unknown, but um, not not favoured winner. Um, so you know, we play out the, the races will play out in many many different ways, and it's, it's you know we're very fortunate to have people like Captain Jerry Mattis who can um, at big races uh, call a lot of the shot. You know. With World Cup winning experience and, and being a US national champion, um, and then Jen Reiter, who's a, very much a, a leader in terms of uh, you know, getting the girls to, to you know all act together on, on, on the one thing. You know, often when you have eight people at a race with different goals and everything, trying to get everyone on the same page is is, is a very important part of that. And, and we're able to do that with with the with the leaders that we have and um, with the athletes that we have. That's great. You know, I talked to Nicola Cramner um, of Exergy, and she was telling me that women develop later on um, in age as a cyclist. And she was telling me that she thinks that some of these rules need to be changed as far as as far as how as the UCI approaches them. Are you on board with her? Um, you know, we, we aren't the UCI team. Uh, for this year, that's something that that is a part of our greater plan heading into 2016. Right. Um, so, and I definitely agree with her in that respect. I mean, you know, the, the leaders and the best riders on on many of the teams, it's different from men. You know, where where there is an under 23 category and then the best riders out coming out of that um, end up, uh, you know, getting a professional contract or whatever. And you can have you know half of your half of your riders under the age limit with women. You know. Really good riders might not even start riding until they're 24, 25, so which gives them one or two years to develop. They might turn professional on a big team, and they've really got only a year under the age limit, if, if even that. And that's, that's really what you'd call a young rider, um, someone who's just approaching the age limit. So, you know, and, and you know, so that, that is something, along with many other things, that, that the UCI will probably look at over the next few years and, and hopefully change or amend slightly. Give me a couple. Yeah. For us, we have you know we we find it easy to have half the riders under the age limit because we we definitely make a big thing out of you know trying to have twenty twenty one year old twenty year old riders who um, who won't make some of those big teams at the moment um, who still are very very good riders and um, sure. we, we we try and make up a, you know, a, a large component of our um, athlete roster is those young riders. Well, that's good because I think that women's cycling needs to continue growing that direction. I uh, give me like a couple of your riders who you think are going to have a breakthrough this year. You know, uh, um, for us, speaking of those young riders, like hey, you can't go past you know, uh, Ruth Winder, Kate Chilcott. You know, those, those two young girls are very, very good athletes. Um, uh, Ruth has. You know, Ruth has been a part of Bandicoot in some way since she was, you know, 15 years old, um, when she used to purchase like the the, the clothing off off Dave Rocky, you know, off Bandicoot, and, um, and just ride around in it and win junior races and that sort of thing. And she went on to some really good things, um, going to the peanut butter team, um, the riding for the US at, at events, and she did her first World Cup this year. But she has come back to to Bandicoot as an as a rider, as one of the girls that she looked up to, as one of the women that she looked up to previously, now she's one of them. It's, it's a really good story. Kate Chilcott, you know, is just one of those tough young New Zealand riders who's you know, going to have a good season. I know. Um, yeah, I basically I've a, a soft spot for every athlete on the team. I think every every rider on our team is going to do some really good things this year. And, um, yeah, that's good. Otherwise, they wouldn't be on the team, right? Yeah, so. I know. I just like you to highlight a couple of them, which you've done that, and I appreciate it. Um, when these women come in, um, 
do you have to teach them anything about being committed to the team or anything about commitment or do they just know it? Um, uh, I think I think they get on the team because they've displayed those attributes before. Um, everyone on the team, they you know, we're a little bit different in that we don't have like a you know a massive corporate sponsor that comes on board and and pays everyone and everyone goes out and rides their bikes and, and does that. Something. We we exist by um, spreading the message of, of women's athletics and um, you know selling clothing and, and selling band kit and clothing and the, the athletes know that they have to do that. They know that as a smaller team, our sponsors are are making a bit of a leap to, to sponsor the team, so they know that they have to you know involve the sponsors in social media um, and, and interact with them on a daily basis, interact with fans and that. So. You know, the athletes have chosen because of that, and then they know that they have that commitment, and they do that. You know, and if and if they don't, that's that's as just as important um, as as their um, riding, you know, as their performances on the bike. Absolutely. For so the continuation of you know their success. Well, this has been some really great information, um, and I just really appreciate you joining us. Do you have anything else that you wanted to add that maybe I left out? No, I think you've come in. I've got a lot of, you know, stuff that, you know, just around the corner, I think, um, hopefully by mid-December we'll be able to, you know, make a, a few big announcements about, you know, the roster and, uh, and, and incoming sponsors. Right now it's pretty much the busiest time of the year for me, like, uh, you know, from, from mid-year onwards, it's, it's really planning for, for January next year and getting the show on the road. So there's a lot of stuff. In the mix right now, you know, there's a lot of stuff that go either way. You, you see with some teams like XG men's team folding last night. I mean, that's that you know that that sort of stuff in cycling is always just a step away. So you you you, you try to run away from that and, and run towards some positive things. So we're we're at that point now where we're on the verge of some really cool things, and um, you know, we'll we'll be able to say what they are in December. Well, you're a class act guy, and your team is always class act. Whenever I see one of the ladies out, they are always as nicest and courteous, and they really represent your brand very well, and they are very hard racers, as I've witnessed them on many occasions. And So we just really, from Cycling Illustrated, wish you um, a really successful 2013 season, and I'm sure... You know, that I, I, I tell you that I appreciate you for supporting women's cycling because your job is not easy. Um, it's, it's actually a very hard job, and a lot of your, your things that you do don't even get seen or recognized. So I tell you thank you very much, and um, we hope that you have a great 2013 season. We're going to do that, Brian. Thanks very much. Like, Cycling Illustrated is going to be a big part of that, I feel. And you know, and one thing on what you just said about the barriers and everything, like, there's a lot of good people working on, on, on the Women's Cycling Project, and it's, it's not a work for them, and I think, you know, sometimes in the media you'll just hear about some complaining and everything, but, you know, there are a lot of barriers, but, but there's also gaps that you can, you know, duck through and, and, and on, on the path of success. Yeah, we're going to break it down. Uh, yeah. It's coming. So, women work just as hard as the men do, and, uh, it's, and, it's, and it's just as exciting, I think, so. Thanks, for sure. Well, you have a great day. Thanks for joining us on Cycling Illustrated. Cheers, Brandon. Bye-bye.